What's up everybody? Wallace Farming Sawmill and we got a new video for you today. Probably not going to be doing a whole lot of sawmilling today, but I got a couple tasks that I think you'll find interesting if you hang around. And we we got to mention that today's Memorial Day. So Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. And for those that have had family who have served and you've lost through the years, you know, it's... I got... If you wait to the end of this video, I'm going to tie this together in Memorial Day. And you guys know why we respect Memorial Day here so much. Because we literally wouldn't be here on this piece of property if it wasn't for my great uncle. So we'll tell you that story here at the end. And this is what we're going to get at in the video. My plans is I got to go get a new compressor for my shop. And I want to go and show you some garden updates. We got to stake the tomatoes, which are really, I should have done a week ago. We've but, been lazy on it. But I'm going to get them staked today on camera. And then, what's the last thing we got to do? Oh, we got to plow the field up. Plow the field. We're going to plant a dove field for dove season. So we're going to put soybeans and a bunch of mixed up stuff and i don't got all the seeds yet but i do got to get the field cut and prep for that and miss Brittany has not used our 53 ford jubilee yet so i'm gonna give her a little experience and show her how to drive and use that so if you hang tight you'll get to see all those things in this video got us a new air compressor It's unloaded off the truck. Now we got to get it to the corner of the shop. So I think I'm gonna make Rip record me doing this little shuffle across here because I don't have a dolly, but I don't need a dolly. I can get things done, right? We probably need a dolly. We probably should have a dolly. <laughs> Just a shuffle walk. It works. It's working. We're getting close to where it goes. Then we'll unbolt it. about these things, don't we? <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, we gotta get some odds and ends hooked up to this thing so that we can uh, actually use it. I mean, it's kind of like a break-in cycle or something. What did it say, Britt? Like 30 minutes? 30 minutes. You had to run it for you. With it wide open, like no nothing in it. Yeah. So. 
Okay, let's fire this thing up for the first time since we got it wired in. And we're just gonna leave this open because we gotta let it run in for a little bit per the instructions. Okay, so the last thing we gotta do today is get that hose reel installed over here. I think I'm gonna put my hose reel right along the wall here, so we'll make that work out. Another little update for those that are interested, since we're doing some odd and ends today, I did get the hardtail installed on my Harley. Got her welded in, got the fender mounted, new king and queen seat done. So I just got some odds and ends left to do to get this thing right. I gotta get uh, my electrical run, oil tank, plumbing, just some odds and ends. We'll be back on the highway soon. Got that air tank installed. Did show you a little update on the Harley there. But we gotta get to some farming part of this because today's thing is some farming. We got some tomatoes that need staked. It's hot out here, but we took the day off from Memorial Day from working so that we could get done some things. It's technically kind of work, but you know, <laughs> some work on the farm that we need to do. And uh, now we gotta get that field cut in one more time because we're gonna plant it mid to end of the week. And steak the tomatoes so let's go get those items done get them checked off the list that's right all right we wouldn't do much disking if we didn't put some fuel in here because she ain't got a lot left in it from the last time i turned that field in so the plan is to get out here and cut it in one more time and then i'll probably run the tiller through it before we plant but one day this week we're going to plant a mixed bag of stuff out there for a dove field. I know we're going to put sunflowers and I'm not sure what else. Kind of still researching that. But uh, I'll tell you guys about this tractor a little bit. I got Britt recording me here while I dump this fuel in her. This is a 1953 Ford Jubilee. And uh, I've always liked Ford's international old antique tractors. And I got this one, found it on a marketplace find last year. Well, it may have been the beginning of this year. I think it was the beginning of this year. It may have been the beginning of this year. Somewhere in like January, because it was cold when we went and got it. Anyway, I have yet to relinquish the powers of this tractor to Brittany yet. <laughs> Today, I'm going to show her a little bit of how to do some disking in the field on this thing. You guys stay tuned for that. So we're going to make sure we're in neutral over here and then kind of telling her as I tell you guys. This is a learning <laughs> process, okay? We're all learning. Got to turn the fuel on first and put fuel in her or it ain't got no gas in it and it won't run. So then we're going to hit our little we're in neutral. This one usually starts with no choke, so. Now that's a cold start right there. She, she, she runs good, but it's probably a hot start because it's 96 degrees out here. Now we'll get her out there to the field and I'm gonna lay some lines off and then we'll let Brittany do some disc in the day. I get to chase Tyler a little around on this pit bike. <laughs> it's pretty fun.
down into first gear for her learning because second gear is a little quick. A little jumpy on that machine for that. If you look down here, guys, it is doing a wonderful job pulverizing this dirt right now. This field was bad out of level and out of shape, and I uh, dissed it, not dissed it, but uh, turn and plowed it. Well, I bush hog it, turn and plowed it, and then we've dissed it one time since then, so this is the second disking. Well, our intention was to keep on plowing here, but anything more than idle right now, we're having a fuel issue where it's not getting enough fuel. So that means I got work to do. I know what it is. The petcock's been giving me some issues. The fuel bo fuel sediment bowl, petcock, all that. I need a new one. Uh, the old one's just real gummed up and corroded over time, and, and they go bad after a while. So as you can see, she runs beautifully and smooth, but if you ask for anything more of her right now and you overuse a little bit of fuel she's supplying, well, she won't go. So I told her to limp that over to the shed and I will go see if Tractor Supply has a new fuel sediment bowl for that. And hopefully that will fix her issue. Now, whether I can get all that done in today's video and back out here plowing, time will only tell. So it's like this on a farm sometimes. Some days you just have to pivot. <laughs> And I don't want to work on the tractor right now. It's kind of aggravating. It's hot. So I do need to get these tomatoes staked. So let's go do that. Then we'll go back and revisit that later. All right, I got some steaks I took down from my peas over there. They're not cooperating right now. But anyway, they came off the pea trellises and gonna finish staking down through here and tie these plants up a little bit and try to keep them from bushing out too bad Okay, we're gonna tie these up a little bit. And we are at Wallace Farm and Sawmill. Brittany and I, not experts on growing tomatoes. <laughs> but I do get the general idea. We got the concept of, you know, we want the plant going upward. So instead of letting it just grow out here and, and falling over and breaking off, we kind of want to train it up the pole for stability without over pulling it um, to give it some growing room. That's that's my thought. So. Just, just like that all the way down through here and kind of keep them I see a tomato. growing up. Which, yeah, we got tomatoes on. <laughs> and we need to start watching for the tomato worms and stuff because we know how bad they can get, don't we, Britt? Oh, they were bad here last year. Like, explain to the people, <laughs> like, Go ahead and tell them the story of how bad tomato worms can be. You couldn't even walk out here and not see a tomato worm. And usually, I've heard people say, oh, well, there's you have one or two tomato worms. No. We had like... Hundreds. Yes, 10 tomato worms on each plant. <laughs> yeah, and 30, 40 plants out there. And it was crazy how bad it got. So I'm just kind of tying up these bushes to keep them from breaking off. May even need to pull this one over, not yet. This is definitely something that you normally would do a little earlier. Like, for some reason this plant here in particular is it's a little bit smaller. Like, you would go ahead and keep this plant's main stem coming up and around, from, at least from my understanding. Like I said, we're not experts here. We're learning every year, and I promise our tomatoes are looking better every year, so. For sure. They look way better. Last year, we bought <clears throat> a bunch of seeds from the dollar store. We just said, hey, it was better boy tomato seeds. They were at the dollar store. I was like, well, heck, let's buy them here. Bad idea. <laughs> Terrible idea. Now, I, those, like, I planted them and raised them, and the I mean, it was... They were like little small like, ornamental tomatoes. Yeah, but one packet of seeds ended up making like six different varieties. <laughs> I don't know what they had done there, but I know why the dollar store had them, I guess. 
So I'm just kind of that that stabilized that base plant. As this particular limb gets longer, I'll probably have to ease it over and train it up. That's my thinking. So right as of right now, and they're short, bushy type plants. I'm not having to do a whole lot of time, so it won't take me very long to stake the rest of these things. I'll probably just take this guy and just keep him over towards the stake a little ways. Time to get some more steaks. Okay, everybody. We are getting to a point that I want to talk a little bit about Memorial Day and the importance of Memorial Day to the Wallace Farm and Sawmill. So, here's a little family history for you guys. My great uncle was fighting in the Korean War, and I've got some information my dad took down for me on a paper, and I may need to get some bullet points off of that to to read to you, but the I can get to the to the gist of everything. We live originally before, you know, family all separated out different ways through the years on a 80 acre farm here. And my great uncle, let's get to the point. My great uncle was in the Korean War and he was, I believe 19 years old. Uh, was my, my grandpa Kelly, the one who got me into saw milling and everything. It was his brother. And like I said, he was a soldier in the, in the Korean War, and he died in action. Now, he told his mother and father if he had life insurance when he went into the, to the Army and service, if anything were to happen to him, he asked, because he knew. I mean, this is a time, I believe, almost when, when you know, especially young men were different, uh... Because think of the mindset of a you know of an eighteen year old to have set this into motion. But he told his mother and father, "If I die in this war, I want you to use this life insurance to buy yourselves a little farm, and you know to just make a long story short, that's what happened. We we lost my my great uncle in that war, and the last letter that my grandmother got from her son." who I believe he was 19 or 20 when he died. I think he was 19. The last letter that she got from him said, I'm on the front lines and doing fine. Which breaks my mama heart. <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, we have a nearly 12-year-old, and, I mean, that's not but six, seven years later, you know, that my, my grandmother lost her son. And this farm at the Wallace Farm in Sawmill, we live on a 15-acre acre section of that original 80-acre farm. And... This land was bought and paid for with the blood of my family. So it's really um, it's really neat and sobering to think about the fact that, you know, Memorial Day being how important it is. It's honoring those that we lost in, in war. And I had a grandfather on my mother's side who was uh, 22 years, retired Army Master Sergeant, and... You know, ultimately, that's kind of what took him too. And now he didn't die in service. He he served uh, four years in Vietnam, four years in Korea. But long story short, ultimately that is what you know took him out too. But it, it's sad, and uh, but it just it, it's it's a sobering fact, and we have to talk about it on Memorial Day that uh, someone you know in 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 our case of this farm here. You know, we can bring it to a, a literal, like, my uncle died, and that's what bought this farm, which is what he asked his mother to do. And they did. On that 80-acre farm, they raised cotton, and they had vegetable gardens. But now, their their crop that they sold, and this would have been in the early to mid-50s, was, was cotton. And uh, they had two mules and ten kids, and that's how they... <laughs> That's how they raised uh, the farm that they had, and they raised corn and everything else here too, you know, to... It was back in a time when you raised your own food, you lived your own way, and you did your own thing. So, it's really neat. I, I, I just had to, you know, touch on that fact. I thought it was a neat fact for Memorial Day to talk to you guys about that. Well, I mean, 
we, we kind of know the feeling of that loss. So if you want to share any of your stories below in the comments, um, reflections and, and memories and things like that, that'd be really cool. And we really enjoy you guys. We appreciate you watching these videos. And every video can't go to plan. And we really wanted to get that field plowed. We I was were, having fun. Yeah, I think Britt was enjoying. She was just getting going. But I, <laughs> it's not a big issue to fix. It's just I started out getting this compressor over here to my left <laughs> installed today. And then one thing led to another. And my hose reel that's down here at my feet, I, I don't got that guy hooked up just yet. We're close, but it's always run back and forth to town. Comment below if you've ever had a video, I mean a video, but a project to where you just continuously went four to five times back and you just can't get it all together, <laughs> no matter how organized you try to be. So, it's like that, but I enjoyed making this video. So, if you got anything you want to add, Miss Brittany, what do you want to add? Because I'm probably forgetting something. Uh, just check out our Patreon and our Instagram. And That's like, gonna be comment, and subscribe. The description below, there will be a link to our Patreon, which is where we do some updates throughout the week and everything. And our Instagram's there, trying to get that popping off. But that's going to do it. Until next time, folks. See ya.